Alright, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Knights of Horror. I am joined by a longtime fan and straight up homie, Will Martinez. How's it how going? How you doing, Will? Pretty good, you? How's quarantine treating you? Uh, a little rough, a little lonely. But you know. A little lonely, yeah. <laughs> yeah it goes. Just like all of us, that makes sense. Um, today on the channel, we're going to talk, talk about top five HHN mazes. Now... Um, originally I wasn't going to join in, but I'm going to, I'm going to join in on this one just cause I think off the top of my head, I can name my top five, um, really, really fast, honestly. And I, I'm already thinking about them right now and I think I got them. I think I pretty much got them all, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah. All right, Will. Um, so this, I know this is a subject that both of us really like. Um, I know that. Uh, we're both longtime Horror Nights fans. Um, mm, probably, yeah, you're probably a little bit. I mean, I've been just going to the event since for like this. I mean, this would have been my tenth year this year. Right. We still don't know if the events happening or not this year, but uh, four for you. Okay, so yeah, you are more of a uh, go every night type guy, though. Ah, uh, this is true. This is true. Well, I do my best. I wouldn't say every night. I do my best. <laughs> yeah. Um, being that Will lives like a lot closer to the park than I do. So, <laughs> me, it was like trying to hit it up at least once a weekend. And Will it was there like every night. And I'd probably bump him to him be, uh, <laughs> for opening ceremony or for, for early entry. And then I'd see him. Uh, Actually, I don't know if I did opening ceremony this year. I think this might have been the first year I didn't do that. Really? Yeah. I think I was always like early entry. And I was like, and I'll get it next time. And I just never did. <laughs> never got it. Yeah. I think I did it. I think I did it. Um, opening the opening weekend because we went that Friday, like the first time I ever went. Because we didn't do um, we didn't do the preview night because we didn't know that was going to be the official opening night. We thought that was just going to be preview night, and it turned out that was like official opening night. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. didn't do that, but right. went that Friday. And um, did the, the opening ceremony because my tradition is if uh, – well, I only started going multiple times, I think, last year. Um, mm -hmm. And I did I did twice. I did opening night and closing night. This year I went a little bit more um, out of the nights because, of course, of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, right. So I had, I had to see that as much times as I could before it left. Um, so sure, I uh, – I did opening ceremony that Friday because I had front of the line. That's been a tradition of mine uh, for since 2016, uh, just to get um, the front of the line pass to guarantee I do everything. Because in the past I've gone, I have not done everything. So mm -hmm. I think it wasn't until 20, 2014 or 2015 was like the first year I did like everything. Really? Yeah. So like before you like missed a ton of races? Before I would miss like one or two. So we would try our best to do everything. Um, but – for the majority, I'd get through most of them, at least a lot of the heavy hitters. So 2015 was the first year when I did General Mission that we got through everything, which I thought was really, really cool. And then 2016, we just decided uh, we'd just opt out and buy the front of the line pass to guarantee us to get everything done. Right. right so, right. yeah, man. So mazes, of course, are big, obviously, part of these events. Um, and Universal is known for doing both intellectual, intellectual properties and – originals at some time um so go ahead hit us off with your number five all right number five uh this was kind of this was the only spot that was kind of tricky for me because i had a few contenders but right. i gave it to universal monsters 2018 okay i slash because man this maze it was kind of just um it was uh, an idea that like I didn't think was gonna come to the event anytime soon. Grant, I was very new to the event at this time, but like, right. it's such a cool concept having all these old um, like characters being like revitalized for a new audience. Right. Obviously, I'm a mat, or I guess not obviously you guys, but I'm a massive Slash fan. Right. And right. him compose that whole uh, that whole um, score for the maze was just amazing, and he killed it, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah, um, he's, he's then, slash man. <laughs> yeah, he slash. And then we had all these crazy, cool, like uh, inventive scares. Like there was a projector room, which, like, I think it had been done before in 2017. 
Yeah, because they had the sinister where you like pop through the right. I think they executed it like really well in this one. Um, and then you had the beautiful Invisible Man room and like you just like amazing set design all around. Right. I think Killer Maze. No, I agree. No, uh, Universal Monsters I think was the uh, the start of something that a lot of fans wanted to come back, and that was because of the House of Horrors. Um, you know. A couple years prior to that, before they added Walking Dead, I think I believe 2014 or 2015 was the last year of House of Horrors, um, and that was like a beloved property maze, a full time attraction that everyone loved and everyone loved going through, regardless of HHN and regardless of a daytime. It was just something that everybody loved going to because it had the Universal Monsters in it, which was really cool. Um, and over HHN, they they had the opportunity to like retheme it to different things. Um, of course, you had the memorable uh, Universal Monsters Resurrection. Uh, I think they did two years of that, uh, and then they did the remix version. But it was that was the first year figure came to the event, which was I think 20, 2012 and twenty no twenty twenty twelve and twenty thirteen. That was the two years that the first two years that I saw figure came to the event. Um, and he did an amazing soundtrack for that. And then, of course, the very first year that I went to HHN, which was in 2011, um, it was uh, The Wolfman, based on, uh, G- uh, not Guillermo del Toro, um, Benicio del Toro's Wolfman. Uh, it was the remake Wolfman movie that came out that year. So that was really cool. And then, of course, they did Face Off, which was a, a lot of people didn't like. I didn't mind, but I only went through it one time. But I, I didn't mind it. I, I liked I, I was a fan of the show Face Off and to see like a lot of those characters come to life was really cool, but it gets a lot of backlash. Um, because like a lot of people complain of how the masks look and, and everything and a lot of just a lot of people complained about what the characters look like because they were saying, of course, Oh, this is face off, this should be like the show and stuff, but I mean I guess they got they had what they worked with and I'm not gonna blame them on that. Uh, and then twenty I think twenty. I think twenty fourteen. Uh, twenty fifteen. I don't remember. I'm Confucian. Um, <laughs> no, I think. Uh, yeah, but it's been a lot of things over the years, and it was really cool. I think one year. I remember one year it was Chucky. Um, that might have been twenty twelve, and then twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen were figure, and then twenty fifteen was faced off the last time that maze was ever at the event, and then the following year it was done. Walking Dead just came out. They revamped it and everything. So. Yeah, um, no, it was it was definitely something though. Uh, I love Universal Monsters. Uh, that really brought back the nostalgia of House of Horrors. So yeah, for my number five, I'm gonna go um, The Shining. Now, an- this is another maze a lot of people didn't uh, really. They, I mean, I've heard fifty for fifty fifty. Um, you know, comments about this one. Some people really liked it. Some people really didn't. Uh, again, I only went to the event once that that year. So The Shining for me was. Um, it was awesome. I mean, there was a lot of scenes I know a lot of people were disappointed about, but I think overall they executed telling the story of the movie in a five-minute experience, which was really cool. I mean, you had the beginning, and it, and and majority of that maze, of course, started when Jack was starting to go mad. Um, mm-hmm. And with a movie like The Shining, much like The Exorcist, it's it's it, there's not really a lot to work with. I mean, there there's a ton of content to work with to make it a maze, but as far as like scary wise, like not a lot of the good stuff happens to like Jack goes mad, which is towards the end of the movie, um, mm-hmm. and that's that goes the same with how The Exorcist was. There's not really a lot of moving around that that movie does. It takes place in one room, and that's what Murdy's biggest struggle was with that movie is how do you execute a one room movie and just bring all these scenes to life, but Nonetheless, I think what they had to work with with The Shining, uh, they, they got done. And uh, one of my favorite scenes, of course, in that is seeing the Here's Johnny scene. But, of course, it wasn't Jack Nicholson saying the Here's Johnny. I think they had someone record or dub that, which I thought was funny. But, uh, nonetheless, it was it was a cool experience to walk through that scene, um, being a fan of that. Of course, that's such an iconic uh, line in, in the history of horror. So, yeah, man, that's my number five. Uh, what's your number four, brother? Well, funny you say The Shining because my number four also happens to be The Shining nice. 2017. Man, that uh, so 2017 being my first ever time at the event, uh, like this maze instantly stood out to me as like something crazy cool and like the you know what was a decent year 2017. You know, it right. gets a little black. It has a little special place in my heart though. Right. Um, but I, you know, I love this movie like this. Uh, this maze in particular is kind of what like sparked my like love of horror and like horror nights and whatnot. Right. And it was, I think, uh, you know, obviously there were some 
uh, shortcomings with, uh, you know, the elevator scene probably wasn't the best executed. And some people complain about the Grady twins and whatnot. I didn't right. really have a that, but, uh, you know, there were some uh, drawbacks places where they could have improved, but you know what? They worked with what they had. And I think 2017 was a pretty limited budget year too. Yeah. Um, so, and I thought personally that uh, Jack Nicholson masks looked really great. Yeah. Uh, what it was. And uh, I don't have too much to complain about. It was decent. It was pretty scary for uh, one of those mazes. And they did what they could to like shape a lot of their hallways to cut down on some of the black rooms. Like, you know, they had the typewriter room with the paper all over the place. I yeah. That was cool. And then at the end with the, what really impressed me was the hedge scene maze with uh, they could, they could have easily just gone black walls, mm -hmm. but you know, they AC in there and they had like the snowed out like jack costumes and the you know the like decorations for the hedges and whatnot right I mean, that final prop at the end with jack yeah. i thought it was really well executed and that's why that comes in at number four no i agree i agree 100 percent um number four for me is going to be uh halloween michael myers comes home now that was a maze that they brought in 2015 um which was a decent year it was a pretty good year to say nonetheless but 2015 brought back Michael Myers to the event, and that was the first time I get to I got to experience Michael Myers at the event. So I was very excited when that when that came, based around of course the first film, um, which took place in the Parisian courtyard, uh, was a very interesting maze. Uh, you know, for it, it and executed the movie from start to finish again. Horror Nights in Hollywood is very famous for doing that, executing a movie. Uh, from start to finish, putting the most iconic scenes uh, to tell the story and to flow you through this maze, uh, to keep you know loyal to the uh, to the movie at least. And um, they did a very good job doing that story. Of course, you start off in Michael's house with him as a little kid. You're hearing that audio and you're hearing that story told after he just killed his sister. And then you're making your way when he returns back to Haddonfield and causes chaos on Halloween night in 1978. Um, so it is just a. Uh, a fun maze walking through. I mean, loving to see Michael Myers. Um, honestly, I'm the type of person that I would, I, uh, with my buddy Eddie, I would love to see Michael Myers at the event every year if we could. But that's just me because I think there's a lot they can work with with all the movies. And once they finish the movies, then wait a couple years and revamp it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> because there's going to be a new line and new breed of fans who are fans of Michael Myers who wants to see another maze uh, mm -hmm. come down the line. So... And I know Murdy said he wants to accomplish all the Halloween movies eventually. So he's gotten up to four. So all he needs to do is five, six, H2O, and uh, Resurrection. And, of course, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies and the new R Halloween movies. So he's got quite a lot to work with on that. And I know every now and then he'll take a couple years to give them some time off so they don't get, like, repeated and stuff. And then he'll bring them back. Of course, we didn't get a Halloween maze in 20 2019. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't get – looking like from speculated lineups that I've seen, we weren't going to get one this year as well. But uh, as time grew more and more, one of the speculations I saw was the Waterworld queue looked like a lot like the gas station from um, the Halloween 2018 movie where the podcasters get killed. So that was a little interesting to hear that. So I was – whether or not we get an event this year, uh, only time will tell. But Halloween definitely has a special place in my heart. Yeah, and – uh, you know, when he was burning through those, he skipped over Halloween 3, which right. I can embarrassed I loved that movie so much. And I think he could do wonders with that movie. Right. It's just, you know, it's just like, <laughs> I can't, you know, it's like a perfect platform to have a maze built off of. No, I, I agree. And he always puts Easter eggs for Halloween 3 in the last couple of maze. But I think Halloween 3 is good for a maze, especially because, like, those robot clones that are surrounding the silver shamrock it, it i think it could be perfect for jump scares and and to tell that story and then when you actually see like the, what the masks and are, are doing when when they when they watch that like little video um it is definitely something that can when they bring that to life can look disgusting i mean obviously we've seen what they've done with of course creep show um last year with the whole cockroach scene which i am terrified of cockroaches so walking through that was just disgusting little feather and stuff like that i luckily for me and that was the worst that was the worst thing i i was scared to, to feel luckily for me every time i went through that maze i didn't feel it once you, oh god <laughs> the amount of times that scarred me and i knew it was coming yeah that was brutal all right so for my number three uh i have killer clowns from outer space nice last year uh this maze 
blew me away. I was hopeful after seeing the Orlando one and just this one, the Hollywood one, just totally exceeded my expectations. Right. I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard it announced and I was I was doing like checking out the construction and whatnot, I was a little worried it was gonna be like a black wall fest because mm-hmm. that would be pretty easy to make that happen, but he pulled it off, man. John Murdy and the rest of the team, they killed it and they filled that thing out. Yeah. That was fun and pretty scary from like start to finish and really creative ways to work around. Like the shadow puppet scene was pretty cool. Yeah. And the, you had the doors shifting with the lights and whatnot. Yeah. And then yeah, Hanzella could have been a little better, but I'll forgive him because the rest of the maze just was perfect and beautifully done. I agree. But, and you know how I feel about that movie, so uh, there's right. no there's no argument about that. I, I the only thing I would have changed, and I still wasn't even mad about, it, of course, is is the clownzilla, but right. nonetheless, like the maze was for me was flawless, and <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Uh, my number three is gonna go to Universal Monsters 2018. Now, when they brought that, I thought it was an interesting concept. I remember uh, going to numerous conventions uh, and hearing about it. Uh, the one time we heard about it the most, of course, during. I think they only really had one panel where they talked about it, but it was an awesome panel, and that was at Scare LA. And um, if you guys were there, you guys got treated to Slash actually coming out on stage and re- and sharing the music for the first time. And I remember hearing that and seeing concept of, of this maze and just losing my shit. It was awesome, um, and and a surprise of Slash coming out just to be at the panel, like to see Slash. That was the second time I ever seen Slash in person. Uh, first time being, of course, with Guns N' Roses, but. Um, this second time was was him just coming out, uh, sharing his music that what he made for Universal Monsters and yeah, I think they have a lot of success going with these mazes. Uh, last year they did Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and I had very low expectations for that. You know, usually with HHN they don't tend to really knock it out of the park with a sequel of any sort of maze, um, and they really did a, a, an amazing job with this one. Um, so I'm excited to, if we, if we do get the event this year, I'm excited to see what they have next for the Universal Monsters, uh, chapters, um, from what it's looking speculated, it looking like the bride. So, right. um, I think the bride finally deserves her own spotlight and I think that, uh, they can execute this one as well. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, Universal Monsters 2018, man, they, they just executed that maze so beautiful from the outside facade of you walking through that cemetery. That was beautiful. Um, they took a lot of inspiration from Europe, of course, with the, the whole spray painting around the, the cemetery and stuff, which I thought was really cool. And then going inside uh, Dr. Frankenstein's castle already on fire post-Frankenstein uh, movie was awesome. And then you go inside, the, of course, the movie vault room. And then you, uh, I think The Invisible Man for me just stole the show. I love the way that looked. Um, seeing, the, seeing the Phantom of the Opera was really cool. And, of course, seeing the Wolfman and Dracula. The Mummy had a little brief cameo, which was really cool. Um, and then at that ending scene with the special effects of, of Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein working on the Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster pulls the switch and that whole room just goes berserk. Um, that was such an, a cool effect. Um, and I'll never forget that. That was an amazing maze. And I, I remember after that, people were like, I hope they bring back House of Horrors because of this. Like, this was beautiful. Right. Yeah, and I think it's really it's really awesome to see that, like, uh, you know, the Universal Monsters mazes doing so well and, you know, they killed it with, uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. I hope this kind of comes as like a, you know, almost like a badge of quality whenever they bring back the Universal Monsters maze. Like, you know that's going to be a solid thing. Yeah. All right. So on to number two, I got Ghostbusters. Nice. Now for me, this wasn't the scariest maze in the world, but that almost didn't matter because, I mean, you know, going into it, I didn't really expect it to be the scariest. Right. But, like, from that beautiful, like, facade outside the, you know, um, the station, and then you had the taxi cab with the, um, with the like, ghost in it, and then you had, um, like, the soundtrack blaring. You could hear it from, like, across the, <laughs> the right. back. Line. And then you walk in, and... Uh, instantly you have that awesome scene with um, uh, oh what's her name uh, the receptionist yeah um, well I'm not going to remember it but like having all those awesome character interaction moments and then all the beautiful special effects with um, Slimer uh, and the proton packs and then of course our amazing um, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man at the very end right. I think it was solid all the way throughout beautiful puppetry beautiful like everything he killed it. Right. Can't forget this bad boy, too. 
Right, right, right. That one's in my room. <laughs> yeah, I got like six of these, man. <laughs> and then also, I, did a solid job of playing Lewis. Yeah, that guy was spot on, man. He looked just like him, and um, it was funny because at the end of the at the at the last night, he was literally trying to get rid of his cards, and I think he was talking to Sammy. Like that was a maze too, where when we would show up for early entry, it was mm -hmm. always like a walk right on. And that <laughs> last night that we went. The, we walked right in and we practically had the whole maze to ourselves which was really cool and he was following us in the reception room and he was talking to sammy but sammy didn't really hear him and he's trying to get the password but then he just gave him a card regardless because i think they were just trying to get rid of the card so um that was that was yeah that was really cool i, I really enjoyed that maze and, and i had a lot of fun a lot of great memories in that maze a lot of great scares and, and the characters just did a, an a1 job on that one so uh, number two for me is going to go to uh, Black Sabbath 13 3D. 2014, this maze came, and it was phenomenal. Um, you had the music of Black Sabbath brought to life into a uh, original horror maze, which I thought was really cool. Their new album, 13, had just launched, which was their final studio album ever. Um, and they just went on a huge tour to promote that. And, you know, what better way to promote it even more is having a maze around that. Not to mention that was the year that they also played a lot of the soundtrack over the um, the uh, escalators going down from the lower lot into the upper lot, which I thought was really cool. So you guys get a little sneak preview of what this album sounded like. Uh, but walking through this maze, I mean, hearing a lot of the iconic Black Sabbath songs, of course, you start with the uh, the opening riff that started it all, which was Black Sabbath. Um awesome yeah you start with that and going through you hear like songs like nib uh, electric funeral iron man war pigs you know you hear all these iconic songs as you're walking through and it really helped bring the uh bring to life the music of black sabbath which i thought was just amazing and i'm i'm really really wishing they they go um that route that route again of bringing back like those heavy metal music mazes because they really fit the event of course we've had them with alice cooper we did two years of Alice Cooper, which was Welcome to My Nightmare and Go to Hell. And I went through those, and they were phenomenal. And then we had Black Sabbath 13 3D, which was really good. Um, and we're kind of getting that a little bit with Slash. Um, of course, he did Clowns 3D and um, the Universal Monsters. You know, he's, he's really kind of bringing that metal meets, like, classic era um, type music, which I really like about that. But uh, Black Sabbath 13 3D, man, I think it's hands down the best music maze they've ever had at the event. And I'm hoping that they do... Eventually down the line, I'm hoping they do an Iron Maiden one because I feel like they can knock that one out of the park. Um, but only time will tell. Right. And myself, being such a massive Black Sabbath fan, I am so jealous. Right. I got to experience that. And I also love Alice Cooper. I can't believe I missed all those. That, that was fun, man. Those were, those were really solid mazes. Just to bring the music of those artists to life were just amazing, dude. Right. And because yeah. those were my, like, you know, gateway bands and the, like, right. rock and roll and all that kind of stuff right so it's like yeah that's awesome just, yeah I, I i enjoy them every single minute i wish they'd bring them back just for one last time <laughs> just see them once well that's why walking through pandora's box like was awesome for me because they used a lot of the sets they used for black sabbath 13 3d so a lot yeah. of that you saw like especially in the room with the stilt walkers like i remember that in black sabbath 13 3d and i was just geeking out like of all the stuff they used they reused for that maze which fit perfectly so Right, right, right. All right, anyway, so on to number one. My number one maze is uh, Poltergeist from 2018. Nice. Now, Poltergeist is my favorite movie of all time. Like, <laughs> to me, nothing even gets close. Um, but walking through that maze, uh, so this was the first year that I started going to Horror Nights a lot. I think I hit 11 times that year. And that was always, I always made a beeline for the back lot right at 5 p.m. And I would just hit Poltergeist like five times in a row for the park even open. Nice. Because of that, I got so many walkthroughs. I think I almost walked through it close to 30 times. 13, nice. But, but I had at least four run-throughs entirely alone. Nice. You know, going to those rooms with like the incredible like, that um that hand scare through the like TV like yeah. scared the crap out of me every single time. <laughs> Beautiful set design in the kitchens and the bathroom area right. and the bedrooms are just gorgeous. And then you get to like that massive puppet at the end, which I was I was hoping they'd pull it off and I never expected them to do it like that well. Right. And then of course 
I think, in my opinion, the scariest room of any Horror Nights maze I've ever experienced was that coffin room. Oh, yeah. Coffins, these open the coffins, and you don't know who's an actor and what's, like, a prop. Yeah. You're kind of ducking the whole way through, and going through that alone is just, like, one of the best Horror Nights experience I've ever had. All these people swatting at your head. You're, like, ducking under, like, please don't kill me. Yeah. Then, no, that was cool. That Yeah, that to me is just the perfect maze and that beautiful facade too. oh yeah they they nailed it dude i don't i I don't think i've ever seen one in my opinion better than that right no i agree they they really they really because the house is located in the uh in you know the valley area so they really they went down there and, and did their research to to really um to really kind of get that on nail on the coffin um and i've actually been to the house uh twice before uh, I've, I've driven past it and I've actually got out and taken a look at it and it looks like it's still there to this day. I'm surprised. And I can only imagine that the people who live there are probably tired of all the horror fans that drive up there to, <laughs> to go check it out because it's, it's part of movie history and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> like that's exactly it, man. And, and it, it, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, you just look at that house and you're like, man, I can't believe that's the poltergeist house, but right. it's really and, cool. And having that like, in, that's also my favorite film score of all time. You right. Know, iconic, iconic music playing throughout the queue just put me in that mood where I was like, this is about to get scary as hell. Yeah. It was, it was perfect to me. Like yeah. That, yeah. I love that opening, that opening scene too, right when you walk in where you enter the front room. Like that is just, that was really, it looked detailed. Super, super. Yeah. I love that scene. That was a good scene. Yeah. That was awesome, man. Uh, all right, number one, for obvious reasons, everybody knows. I've said it multiple times on the channel. Here it comes. You can't, you can't replace this number one because it is probably the best maze, in my opinion, that they've ever produced, and that is Stranger Things 2. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Right? I mean, those black walls were just beautiful. Perfection and how they got so many demodogs. Right, and then you could tell this year with the black walls instead of you know painting up and down, they did curves. So you know, right, right. Yeah, curves. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, in all serious, my number one is gonna go to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, that year for 2019 was a big year for us. We got to finally sit down and talk with John Mazzari, who was um, really awesome for us to to let let us into his home and and have a podcast with him. Um, and I remember that leading up to that, we would always message each other like, Oh my God, this is going to be cool. And, and we'd get excited and, and shout out to John because every time I went, he was like standing out in front of the maze, hanging out, taking pictures, talking with everybody. And that was really cool. And then if you were, if you were lucky enough, you can actually go into the maze with him. So he was like super supportive of that maze. Not only that, he actually traveled out to Orlando one weekend and I went to go check out the maze out there. So that was really cool as well. But no, I I think with this maze, it was it was its own experience, man. It was beautiful. I mean, as you were walking down the alley to hit the back lot, they were playing John's score, which was awesome. Um, and then you know the maze started right in the front when they when they did the scene with the old man who was looking for his dog. That was kind of like the start of the maze right there. It was just spot on. It was beautiful. The facade looked great. Uh, they put the forest setting, and then you had the tent, and of course the iconic wire where the old man gets electrocuted, which I thought was amazing. And then walking through dude i felt at home like as a kid this was the one thing i always wanted to walk through was this spaceship because it looks so fun and it looks so cool but very terrifying at the same time <laughs> and i think just with the colors and just seeing a lot of the iconic scenes like the the if you were lucky enough like in the beginning when when the uh the clown would pop up at the elevator he would open it sometimes and it was really cool um, and then going into the Cotton Candy Cocoon room, which was amazing. That looked beautiful. I I just – I lost my shit going through that maze. It was so good. And then, of course, the, the Shadow Puppet scene was beautiful. And then you go into uh, the house where they put Debbie into the into the ball, the balloon, which was beautiful. Uh, the bathroom scene was included, which that was amazing. I think the most beautiful scene in that whole maze was, of course, the sheriff station where you're seeing the puppet. Um, that was just beautiful, well executed. They did an amazing job, very detailed, and uh, I I really enjoyed that. And then of course going to the end, of course to the circus, or to the um, the amusement park was beautiful. Of course another door. Every time I went through, I yelled that. 
Um, you are. Yep. That, <laughs> that was me every time I walked through it, man. Um, but nonetheless, they did a great job putting this uh, amazing chronological order and adding John Mazzari's score to it, which I thought was really cool. Um, and I just I loved it. Uh, and I wish they would bring it back uh, for 2020. But um, looking like that's going to be a no. But it's okay because this lineup, the speculated lineup, looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I'm curious to see how they pull off a lot of these properties. What really surprised me about um, Killer Clowns is that because it's not like the biggest property in the world. Like it's still, you know, it's a cult classic movie. Right. But it's not super popular. I really expected it to kind of get like tossed to the side and just be like, oh, here you go, fans, like here's some black walls, but you got the property, you know? But no, they really put a lot of time, energy, and budget and love into the creation of that thing. And it really shows. And right. that I, that blew me away because I really wasn't expecting them to put all that effort in, but I'm glad they did. No, was- yeah, I, I agree. Because that was one maze, I think, in a lot of the, the construction updates that you saw, you only ever saw the back of the maze and you saw black walls right there. So I think a lot of people were scared about that. Not to mention, dude, and it's funny that you brought up that you didn't think this movie was as popular, but that and us were probably the most packed mazes every night of the event that I went. Yeah, totally. And like, I, uh, the Killer Clowns was the last. Um, this was the only night ever that I've come early entry and not been able to hit everything. I left at like 1 a.m. and I still couldn't hit everything. But Killer Clowns was like a 140-minute wait. And that blew me away because, like, you know, this isn't a huge movie. Yeah. But I think that sounds part is where everybody's like, <laughs> you got me. Yeah. So that's a that's a two hour and 20 minute wait right there, man. That's crazy, crazy, unheard of, really. Um, but yeah, and that was the same thing with us. You know, us was a big property that a lot of people loved. So that maze was always packed, too. I would always see it in like the 140s, 100, 122. It was always a two hour wait at that. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, you would have to get there literally opening to hit that first, but you'd be losing the time of going down to the lower lot by the time you got there. So it was really a hard decision to make if you were only going one night and you got general admission. Um, it was really hard to decide where to go and how to do everything. Because I remember we went one night with my, my photographer, Robert, and we, it was me, him, uh, my ex-girlfriend, and his wife, and I think Sammy joined us. And uh, we went. They got general admission. I, I had told them they should have gotten, you know, the front of the line when we when we got it. But uh, we got general admission. Uh, we did all the things in the. I think we did all the things in the back lot, or we no, we just did Universal Monsters and Ghostbusters, uh, mm-hmm. and then we did. Us, and Holidays in Hell. And then that's all they did, and they, they left. So they didn't even get to see Pandora's Box. They didn't even get to see Killer Clowns. They didn't even get to see Creep Show. They weren't missing out on Stranger Things, but they didn't get to see that either. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of people have had to be like, no, you, you really don't want to do that. Yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> Three and a half hours for some reason, you know? Oh, man. That was another maze. I think it's just because of the property of that's why it was so packed just unavoidable when you have something as massive as stranger things and like i love that show but like oh boy yeah (laughs) they really whiffed that one yeah no i agree and especially with all the content you had to work with with season two and i just feel like they just they lacked it yeah but i mean i that's something i can forgive with the rest of the 2019 lineup yeah and also it was kind of nice because it was a little bit of a crowd magnet and it just kind of like held a lot of your like you know your mainstream crowds and then you kind of like opened up the rest of the park a little bit especially when you're lacking uh, terror tram that year mm-hmm. which normally sucks up a lot of people but now this time you had three and a half hours of stranger things to yeah. do <laughs> that was saying that was probably the highest uh longest wait time for a maze yeah. and then it'd probably go uh between us and killer clowns would be tied i think universal monsters would have been like the fourth longest but right yeah, that's going to do it for our top five HHN mazes. Uh, stay tuned. Will might be showing up in more videos pretty soon. Um, we'll discuss something. We'll see what's up. We probably got some scare zones we can throw in there. or We'll see what's up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, be sure to subscribe. 
uh, with the bell notifications on. Leave them likes, them comments down below. Also, check out our merch store. We have a ton of new uh, merchandise that we just uh, put up. A new Maze Tree Mints t-shirt, a uh, bunch of new face masks, and, of course, a new Knights of Horror logo Blood Moon t-shirt, which uh, Robert both designed for Maze Tree Mints, and the Blood Moon logo, which looks really dope. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, uh, links in the description below. But like always, we will see you guys next time. See ya.